Well, for more on all of this, I spoke to Zainab Chowdhury. She is the director of the Maryland chapter of the Council on American Islamic Relations. Zainab, thank you so much for being here on BBC News. Now, this week, President Biden unveiling those plans to develop a national strategy to combat Islamophobia. What did you make of what the president announced? Yeah, normally this would be very welcome news, especially in this political climate where we're seeing an unprecedented uptick in the Islamophobia and the anti-Muslim bigotry and the hate crimes that are coming to our office's attention. Uh, we also want to make sure that it is in conjunction with the demands from all American Muslim organizations that are calling for an immediate ceasefire in Gaza uh, that is compounding the bigotry and the harassment that we're seeing within our communities. And the president, of course, is calling for a humanitarian pause, but are you saying that you prefer something more, a ceasefire altogether? Absolutely. We believe that the immediate ceasefire is the number one demand for Palestinian American communities and Muslim American communities. Uh, we, re we want to reassess the uh, funding of the genocide that's occurring in Gaza, the fact that billions of our tax dollars are funding the human rights violations that are occurring, uh, the, the targeting of innocent civilians, thousands of babies, over 4,000 babies have been murdered, uh, the targeting of hospitals and ambulances um, that's being funded by our tax dollars is unconscionable. And unfortunately, the rhetoric here in our country uh, that's fueling uh, the dehumanization of Palestinians, but also Arabs and Muslims, is something that we urge the Biden administration to take seriously and to, to take into consideration as he talks about a, a national strategy to counter Islamophobia. The FBI director is saying this week that there's been a significant uptick in both anti-Semitic and Islamophobic threats. How would you describe, and you mentioned you're getting reports to care, how would you describe the environment for American Muslims right now? It's very tense. Um, my organization, all my colleagues and I are clocking 18 to 20 hour work days, seven days a week. Uh, we are seeing around the clock complaints of uh, hate bias incidents, uh, requests for assistance in responding to one-sided statements or different kinds of challenges that employees in the workplace are facing or students on college campuses or in high schools are facing. Um, and it's, it's really something that we have never seen before. We haven't seen this post 9-11 America. We haven't seen this level of, uh, of, of requests for assistance. Uh, in, what way, in what way is it actually different? I feel it's more targeted this time. It feels much more targeted this time, um, and especially the fact that any acknowledgement for support for basic Palestinian human rights is being demonized and being, vil being vilified for basically standing up for basic Palestinian human rights in a way that we uh, have, haven't seen before, um, that the fact that students on college campuses are being targeted are being threatened with being doxxed simply for saying that they believe in a free Palestine or they believe that basic Palestinian human rights matter uh, is something that's unconscionable. It's ch it chills free speech, it affects our constitutional rights, and it's affecting the livelihood of many of our community members. Why do you think, and this is a difficult question maybe to answer, but why do you think the events in Israel and Gaza trigger such a strong reaction here in the U.S., something that's taking place thousands of miles away? Well, I think it's important to look at the context here, the fact that uh, the, the illegal occupation of Palestine, the siege in Gaza that has been ongoing for decades now, the violence of October 7th, the horrific violence of October 7th did not happen in a vacuum. There was a root cause of that violence, and that is the illegal occupation of Palestine. That is the siege of Gaza, the human rights violations that occur on a daily basis by an apartheid regime that is insistent on cracking down on vilifying uh, Palestinians on a daily basis, and our tax dollars are funding that. Billions of U.S. tax dollars each year annually fund the illegal occupation of Palestine. Um, and I think that especially the fact that because our government is so firmly entrenched in, in those human rights violations, as Americans, it, it's, it's something that is very paramount in our consciences, many of our consciences, that we have to uh, raise awareness about, about the responsibility that we have in holding our government accountable. We have about 45 seconds left, but I do want to ask you about a new poll that came out this week showing support for President Biden among Arab Americans has dropped from 59% in 2020 to just 17%. What do you think is behind those numbers? I think that people are recognizing that the establishment Democratic Party is no longer reflecting their priorities. And, uh, you know, as a 501c3 organization, my organization does not take a position on favoring one party versus another. Uh, but absolutely, these policies that our government is, uh, is espousing is going to affect how people vote at the polls. And I would not be surprised if that number dips lower.
Zainab Chowdhury, uh, Maryland Director for the Council on American Islamic Relations, or CARE, also the spokesperson at the National Office uh, for CARE. Thank you so much for coming into the studio to talk Thank to us. Thank you so much.